Hello and welcome to the Morning Star series, Why Should I Invest With You? I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Richard Claude, manager of the Janice Henderson Global Tech Fund. Hello. Hello, good morning. So, tech fund, what does tech stock mean to you? Because it's pretty open to interpretation these days, isn't it? I think technology has changed in, in many ways over the last uh, last 20 years, and it's just become a bigger part of our lives. And as a result, it, it's disrupting larger portions of the economy. Um, I think we've seen what it's done to retailing. We've seen what it's done to, to traditional media industry. And now with, with artificial intelligence, it's impacting consumer companies, industrial companies, healthcare companies, and, and financial services as as well. And so our, our definition of a tech stock has to, has to change, but we're still looking for the same things, which is you know, great growth opportunities, secular growth longer term, um, some key barriers to entry that will you know, mean that that company can make profits longer term and then not to overpay for it. And again, I think there will always be hype in technology that hasn't changed. And our job as technology managers is to protect clients from, from that and the volatility that comes from that sort of hype. So with that definition in place, does that mean that Amazon is still very much a tech stock rather than a retail stock because of the growth opportunities there? Yes, and the way they're using technology to, to create that disruption and to disrupt these, these new areas like, like healthcare, like the cloud, uh, and now increasingly financial services too. Yes, they had to put in $150 billion of investment in the last 20 years to redefine that consumer experience, that retail experience, but also create you know, the cloud infrastructure that they have today, which is powering you know, the vast majority of their profit growth with, with AWS. But yes, we very much see that as a, as a technology company that leverages technology to then go and, as Jeff Bessels puts it, you know, your margin is my opportunity, go and take profits from, from all these industries that have yet to be disrupted by technology. And you said at the beginning that the growth sector has grown incredibly over the last couple of decades. How much of it is still, when it comes to making investment decisions, dominated by those fang stocks, by those big classic uh, now household names? And how much of it is about kind of unearthing the new disruptors? I think it's a bit, a bit of both. I mean, on the one hand, we've seen this winner takes most. You know, there is this kind of network effect, platform effect of being a consumer facing internet company, whether that be in social media or, or e-commerce, and you're seeing that the big get bigger there. But on the other hand, there are more nascent sort of areas of technology and, and those companies will by de definition be smaller and hopefully will then be, be much larger uh, longer term. And there's still a lot in the middle, which I think people sort of forget about, that they're always talking about, you know, this new great growth opportunity, these, these companies that they know fang. But a lot of what we do is, is in the middle where, you know, there's some unexpected earnings growth. You're not having to pay too much for it, and those stocks can perform very nicely for you without having to pay Amazon-like multiples or to be stuck in value traps. There's a lot in the middle. And what about when it comes to IPOs? Because tech, more so than any other sector, seems to be getting new companies coming um, to the public forum. How do you decide, as a tech investor, whether to engage in those IPOs or, or whether to leave some of these quite incredible valuations alone? Yes, and, and actually, surprisingly, for, for a lot of people, we're seeing some of these companies come to market uh, at valuations below their last you know, private round. And, and we feel that actually a lot of the, the, the hyped valuations have been in, in, in the private arena, where there's been a lot of capital you know, chasing a, a smaller um, selection of, of opportunities. I think what we try and do is we don't meet these companies for the first time when they IPO and they've been sort of made to look as beautiful as possible by the investment bankers. We spend a lot of time you know, meeting these companies in private land, you know, looking at some of the private rounds and not often you know, participating. But you know, I, I first met Jack Ma, I think, in in 2006, and then when he IPOs in 2014, you know, you have a lot more history than when you know the, the the investment analysts are coming and say these guys can grow a certain amount and you should value this company a certain way. You know, we have the history of the corporate governance of what they did with Yahoo and SoftBank. You know, the growth expectations we've seen of other Chinese internet companies and the sustainability of the franchise. You know, we think that we have better sort of insights into that and can make our own judgments rather than relying um, on on the sell side for for that. And I think we try and do that with all of these new IPOs that come. And that's why we are actually very selective. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.